salt. Um, task one, watch the video and fill in the data table, ammonia and Epsom salt. This data table right here. Okay. Essential question. What evidence of a chemical change can we observe when mixing ammonia and magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt? Okay. As you can see, we start uh, the data table on minute zero, the initial temperature final temperature is 16 so once every two minutes we are going to be taking the um, temperature of our reaction okay make sure you are reading the background information right here next to the little uh, picture so you have a really good observer a really good understanding all right so what we will be doing is mixing Epsom salt and ammonia Okay, ammonia is a pretty strong uh, household cleaner. Uh, definitely do not want to whiff it, so I'm going to get um, some gloves so I don't get it on my hands and safety first. All right, I'm back. So what it says is one teaspoon of magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt. milliliters of ammonia so I'm going to just um, add 15 milliliters into my miniature Irvin Meyer flask notice how I'm away from the Epsom salt I definitely do not want to smell that it gives me a headache like it did a Hewitt last year who thought it would be funny and smell the ammonia that is 15 milliliters of ammonia Ammonia is used to clean household products and stuff, so no, it's not deadly, but it definitely gives you a, a headache. So here's about 15 milliliters of ammonia. A thermometer, and a plastic spoon, and this little beaker here, okay? So um, before I dump this, let's get our initial temperature and start the chemical reaction, okay? So my initial temperature for the ammonia, or no, for the Epsom salt is um, 62.4. And this is initial temperature is, one second, 17.3. So I'm going to go ahead and start collecting that. And every two minutes, I will come back um, and we will go from there, okay? So let me get it situated right here. Loosen up a little bit. Whew. I can smell it. Okay, so two minutes, I will start. Repeat the timer, okay? Um, and the information that I see is that it has gone down to 15.8. Maybe you can see that line a little bit. I'm going to check this the Fahrenheit out, and that is at 60.8. I'm going to mix up the substance. All right, see what's going on. I'm going to actually put these off to the side right now since I don't need those at the moment. Holding it away from me so I don't smell it. Okay, so as you can see, some observations are it's getting cloudy. Um, the ammonia 
I don't know if you can see it, but it doesn't look to be as liquid or as much as it has been, okay? So I'm going to stick these back in it. And remember to read these characteristics of chemical change uh, evidence, increasing or decreasing in temperature, producing a gas, not necessarily producing a gas, color, smell, or texture change. It does smell like ammonia, but I would say the texture is changing. Hello. Um, and then a change in the state of matter. That has yet to occur, but I'm thinking it might. All right, just stay tuned. Okay, so I will be back in a short while to give you the second update. All right. I'm back. So let's see what the second update has for us. It appears that it is at 15.4 degrees Celsius, and this is at 80.6 degrees Celsius now. Okay. So for four, minute four, 15.4. Four degrees and 60.6 .6 degrees 15.4 Celsius 60 60.6 Fahrenheit I'll be back for minute six all right I'm back stop Oop. I'm going to start it for another two minutes. Let's read the information. 60.4, 15. Point, wait, let's get this out of here. Fifteen point five, it appears. Make your observations, getting a little more liquidy, or solid, getting more thicker, I would say. All right, be back in a minute and 15 seconds. Repeat, two more minutes. It looks like it has plateaued 15.7, Be back in two minutes. Here we are, repeat, okay, 15.7, 60.6, looks like it's getting smaller and smaller, look at that um, white residue left on the edge of the glass as well, all right, those are good observations to right down okay I'll be back two minutes sixty point three degrees Fahrenheit and 15.5 teeter-tottering, 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Repeat. We are on... Fifty nine 
point two degrees Fahrenheit. Went down quite quite a bit. That one did. At first, that's what it said. And then this one is fifteen point zero degrees Celsius. So you can see the uh, temperature decreasing. All right, um, and that is an example of a endothermic reaction. All right, that means there is a lack of thermal energy and the um, and a decrease in temperature. Endothermic. I like to remember it's like endo. Shut the window. Uh, and letting all the cold air in there, right? Because it's cold reaction. Okay, so this cup is actually getting cooler. All right, you can't uh, you can't feel it, but I can. Okay. Also, um, as you can see, the the glass is getting foggy. That is called precipitate. All right. So that precipitate is being left behind. All right, and that is a product of this chemical reaction okay so when uh, something else is formed it is in a chemical an example of evidence of an example of chemical reaction um, so when the uh, precipitate gets left behind of the ammonia and um, magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt then that is um, called that leaves behind the precipitate this white um, kind of powdery substance that is going on along the edge of the glass okay 15 seconds for your last one all right um, any other observations you can see to write in your data table it looks like there is much less liquid now than there was all right and let's see about the final temperature in the 16 minutes the final temperature 15.6 for some reason and this is 60.3 so the temperature did decrease um, but it also increased just a little bit but that's not due to the reaction that's probably because there is a little amount of this and the temperature that's actually being read is um, some of the air temperature because this is uh, much longer than um, what is submerged in the liquid all right so I hope you've enjoyed the endothermic and exothermic reactions, okay? As you can see, for the exothermic reaction, uh, there is definitely a color change right here. Uh, the temperature did increase, um, and that is an example of endothermic reaction, okay? Um, so the temperature increased, there was a color change, it rusted, it produced a new material, the product was rust oxidized steel, um, and this endothermic reaction again another chemical reaction the temperature decreased so that uh, is a sign of a chemical reaction also it produced a um, precipitant that is along the outer edge of the glass all right hopefully you guys have a good understanding of the difference between endothermic and exothermic reactions i hope your observations were clear i hope you used what i had to say for these um, observations and the temperature. If you don't get the temperature 100% um, accurate because I was giving you Fahrenheit and um, Celsius, I know I should have been a little more consistent, but I wanted you to be able to tell the difference between um, Fahrenheit and Celsius, all right? Um, we are scientists. Uh, technically, we use the metric, but we are also stubborn Americans, so we use the imperial system um, Fahrenheit as well. So. Um, just to give you guys a good understanding of both um, types of temperature is good. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, unfortunately, uh, you didn't get to do that um, lab yourself. You and your group members would have done that in class. Um, and then done your favorite uh, graph to kind of wrap it all up. Um, bar graph and a line graph. But uh, if you answer the questions on for day four and read the summary, um, you're good to go, nothing to do, all right? Let's finish strong, let's keep it up, be active, be safe, and be cool. See ya.